Hello everyone, this is Rudolph Wilkins with Forgotten Fitness and I have a really special video for all of you today. In this video I will be describing the lift that built a line, the traditional Hackenschmidt lift. Now before going on with this video I wanted to give a shout out to a gentleman that goes by the name Strongman Archaeology on Instagram and his YouTube handle is 61PWCC. Now both those links will be in the description below. But I have been watching his YouTube videos for many years and I am always amazed by the by the astounding strength he has in regards to these odd lifts and strongman exercises. I always wonder too why he never got the recognition he deserved. So I I kind of feel it's my duty to give him a shout out in this video because the inspiration for this video definitely came from his page and I'm trying to branch out a little bit beyond the silver era bodybuilding techniques uh, into the bronze area because these athletes these natural athletes really knew how to train their body to, to really advance what, what they were doing, be it a sport or a circus strongman act or the earliest bodybuilding pioneers such as uh, Eugene Sandow. So this lift, needless to say, is nothing like the Hackenschmidt lift you see nowadays, the hack squat. It is essentially a modified deep knee bend more akin to what you see in the 1930s through the 1950s, I would say, the, the deep knee bend with the heels elevated rather than a traditional squat. And it is vastly different from the Hackenschmidt uh, lift that you see done on the machine, obviously. That is a completely different movement, and I really don't even know why they keep the same name because the muscles worked are different too. It just it just always baffled me why they called that the hack lift machine when you literally have the weight on your back. And traditionally that's not where you ever had the weight. You have the weight low down on, on the body, which I'll go into in a second. But in this video I wanted to explain the history of this amazing lift that's misunderstood and definitely forgotten. I, you never see this variation ever done hardly except for the gentleman I mentioned uh, uh, before, Strongman Archaeology. Now, he does all, ki all kinds of odd lifts, not just this one, but, you know, I've seen him do, I think, 112 pounds, which you might be saying, well, it's 112 pounds. It certainly doesn't sound like that much weight. Well, the form of this exercise makes that amount of weight incredibly difficult. In fact, George Hackenschmidt still holds the record for this exercise. But... I'm going to, like I mentioned, give you the brief history and rundown of this exercise. I'm also going to explain how to perform it uh, to the best of my ability, and I will also demonstrate it for all of you. So I hope you enjoy this video, and make sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoy this, and go check out my Instagram as well, because I've been posting a lot of Silver Era bodybuilding content there, and I plan to also take my recommendations from that. I have a real long list, so if you have any recommendations for future videos, just drop them in the comment section and I'll add them to the list. But I hope you enjoy this video. All right, I feel like I should start off by going over some of the history of the Hackenschmidt lift. So as previously mentioned, it was originally created by Estonian strongman and champion wrestler George Hackenschmidt. The name was originally coined after its superficial resemblance to a Prussian military heel click. And when it was first created, some of the first versions, you had your heels actually touching together. But depending on the literature you read on Hackenschmidt, you find out gradually over time his heels went apart and it took the form of essentially a silver era deep knee bend uh, with the bar barbell behind the back. A big thing worth noting is that this exercise is not a beginner movement and requires incredible balance because you were on the balls of your feet, you're on your toes the entire time, even when you get to the top. You're going to have a desire to put the back of your foot on the ground, but don't do that because that's incorrect. Um, in no depiction I have seen of this being performed or any illustration is that mentioned as the proper thing to do. So you want to actually balance, even at the top of the movement, balance on the, on the uh, balls of your feet. So it's real important that I would do this exercise barefoot and if you're using shoes they need to be incredibly flexible but I would say probably go barefoot so you can grip the ground better be on a fairly soft surface if you have soft feet I've seen certain individuals do it on concrete barefoot but 
but that's how I would do it for sure. That way you can uh, really get the flexibility in your foot. So another thing is you have to keep the weight incredibly light. And this lift will humble even the most experienced strength athletes because if you've ever done a more modern hack squat variation, you may go up to several hundred pounds. But this exercise you surely won't be able to. And I can guarantee that because Mr. Hackenschmidt still holds the record for this lift over 100 years after its creation. Over 120 years now, actually. He managed a mind-boggling 187 pounds on this lift with strict form back in the early 1900s, I believe. And that is unbelievable. That really is an incredible amount of weight with this lift. It might not sound like a lot, but when you give this a try, and if you're using an Olympic barbell, I would be willing to bet the vast majority of you will struggle with just the 45 pounds. I know I struggle with that kind of weight. I, you know, I certainly could go up, but to keep that form perfect, it, it is quite difficult. So in the following slide, I'll actually explain to you how to do that li this lift. And let's. Uh, and if you have any questions, just let me know in the comment section, and I'll make sure to help you out. So I'm sure the vast majority of you are wondering, how do you perform the traditional Hackenschmidt lift? There's essentially no videos online explaining the movement. Well, you want to first begin by standing in front of a fairly light barbell with your feet close together and your toes splayed outwards. So essentially, you're duck footed here. Then you will deep knee bend down and lift your heels off the ground before grasping the barbell at the bottom most position. So at the bottom most position, your heels are already elevated and you have grasped the barbell. A tip here is this movement is more akin to a traditional heel elevated deep knee bend than a modern barbell squat. Now, if you're a little confused about what a deep knee bend is, I'll explain it more in the demonstration, but essentially your spine is completely erect. You're straight up and down your upper body and you're calves are in contact with your hamstrings and your knees are very far uh, in front of your toes. So you'll be able to see it a little bit more in detail, but that's essentially how it works. Instead of a barbell squat where you're stopping parallel, you're going lower than that and your calves are touching your hamstrings. When grasping the barbell at the bottom position, you want to ensure that your hands are touching and you want to proceed to curl the wrists upwards. This will help you get the barbell into the proper position. At this point, position the barbell and hands so that they rest on the lower back slash the upper buttocks. And the, the reason you want to do that is it, it gives you a nice uh, stationary place where the barbell won't roll up and down. Your shoulders can be locked. Everything can be locked in place. Uh, kind of in that little crevice there, that's where you can place your hands. And that'll be a sturdy area where you won't really have too much movement in your upper body. They will remain in this position until the set has concluded. Once positioned correctly, proceed to stand up with the barbell while continuing to have your heels elevated. And that means even at the top of the movement, you can see in this picture to the right, even at the top of the movement, he has his heels elevated. So that is incredibly difficult. I'm going to show it in the demonstration, but I was struggling doing this exercise. I It took me three days to get the form correct because I just could not figure it out. I kept falling over. So definitely start low on this exercise. Start low in weight. Be humble yourself. You know, don't think if you can do a lot of weight on squat or do a lot of weight on a more modern hack squat that you can do a lot of weight on this exercise because likely you can't. Throughout the movement, you want to keep your spine relatively erect and avoid leaning forward excessively. When you go down, you're going to have a you're going to want to actually lean forward and tilt forward, and it's impossible not to at all unless you've got really good form and you've just been doing this for years. So when you start off, there will be some le uh, forward lean, but just keep it to a minimum. Be mindful of it and try to control it. So finally, always keep the reps slow and controlled. This exercise is difficult, so there's no reason to rush it. Learn the movement, focus on it, think about it. Maybe even close your eyes and get in kind of a zen, a zen mode while doing it. And, and really you just feel the burn in the quads and, and understand from their point of view why they use it. That's why I like to do a lot of these exercises is to learn. Learn through experience. All right, so in the next video I will demonstrate it for all of you and I hope you enjoy. All right, so this is the traditional Hackenschmidt lift. As you can see, my feet are splayed outwards. I am standing in front of a fairly light barbell. And when I grasped it, I rolled my wrist forward and placed the barbell in between my buttocks and my lower back. 
and I, that's where I'm staying for the entire part of the movement. Now as you can see my knees are going far in front of my toes and essentially right there that is a deep knee bend. That is what a deep knee bend looks like. So you can see the difference from a standard squat. And I've never got any knee pain from this. You always see people reporting online that this is really bad for your knees. But I think with modern science, we're finding out that's really not the case. In fact, exercises akin to this, such as the sissy squat, are actually beneficial for the ligaments in the knees. They strengthen them. They, through the process of damaging them, they strengthen them over time and, and gives you a bulletproof knee, essentially. So this exercise could easily fit into a workout routine with somebody who is re rehabilitating a knee even. Now, of course, I'm not a doctor and I'm not recommending that, but the idea still applies here that you're using very light weight and, I mean, you could use no weight at all and essentially do a more traditional deep knee bend and work on your balance and and not to mention it's incredible on the quads as you can see my quads are flexing the entire time especially when i get to the topmost portion but the hardest part of this lift is just that balance on the toes you can see i'm doing my best to keep my heels elevated it's mind-boggling to think an individual 100 years ago could do 180 pounds on this lift it's simply incredible but that's pretty much all I've got for you all today. This is the traditional Hackenschmidt lift, a really wonderful exercise that you see practically nobody doing anymore. It is underrated, underutilized, and a lot of fun. Just be mindful and keep the weight light and work with on your own, in your own boundaries. And that's pretty much all I have for you all today. Until next time, this is Rudolph Wilkins with Forgotten Fitness, signing out. Bye-bye.